What if a handful of tiny metals could stop entire factories, delay car launches, and even ground some of the most advanced fighter jets in the world? It sounds like science fiction, but this is happening right now. These metals, known as rare earth elements, are small in size but enormous in influence. They power the magnets inside electric vehicle motors, the sensors in high-tech electronics, and even components in military hardware. Without them, modern industries can grind to a halt almost overnight. Across the globe, companies and governments are starting to feel the squeeze. Factories in India are slowing production, car launches are being postponed, and engineers are scrambling to find alternatives. This is not just a problem for one country, it's a ripple that spreads across economies, affecting everything from consumer technology to strategic defense systems. The most surprising part? India sits on its own rare earth reserves, an estimated 6.9 million tons. Yet despite having this vast natural wealth, the country remains heavily reliant on China for the supply of these critical materials. How can a nation with such potential still be at the mercy of foreign control? That's the question we're about to unravel, starting with what makes these metals so indispensable and why the world is paying such close attention. Rare earth elements, despite their name, aren't actually that rare, but they are tricky. These metals are essential for creating the strong, lightweight magnets that power electric vehicle motors, as well as the precision sensors used in modern electronics and advanced military systems. Heavy rare earths like dysprosium and terbium are particularly critical because they allow motors to be smaller, more efficient, and capable of handling higher temperatures without losing performance. China's new export rules add another layer of complexity. Companies now need to provide end-use certificates before they can import these materials, ensuring they aren't diverted to military applications. This means even ordinary manufacturers must navigate bureaucratic hurdles just to get the raw materials they need. In simpler terms, rare earths are like the hidden batteries behind our technology. Without them, electric cars don't move as efficiently, smartphones lose key features, and even advanced fighter jets can't operate at full capability. Understanding this sets the stage for why China's role as the primary global supplier has become a decisive factor in international industries. This year, Beijing made a bold move that sent shockwaves through global industries. It implemented export controls on seven types of medium and heavy rare earth items. Alongside this, companies now must provide strict end-use certificates before exporting, making it far more difficult for foreign manufacturers to access these critical materials. To put this into perspective, in 2024, China produced around 270,000 tons of rare earth minerals, accounting for roughly 70% of global production and controls nearly 90% of the world's refining and processing capacity. This means that China doesn't just mine the metals, it also dominates the complex process of turning raw ore into high purity usable materials. By controlling both supply and processing, China has effectively positioned itself as the gatekeeper of these essential resources. What was once a smooth global supply chain now faces legal, logistical, and bureaucratic obstacles that ripple far beyond its borders. This policy shift is the spark that triggers the next wave of consequences for industries around the world, starting with those most dependent on rare earths. This isn't just a U.S. problem. The ripple effects of China's rare earth controls are reaching all the way to India, one of the world's emerging electric vehicle markets. India's EV industry relies heavily on imported rare earth magnets, and about 90% of these critical components come from China. That means when China tightens its grip, factories across India feel it immediately. The consequences are multiplying quickly. Suppliers of core components are running low on stock, production lines are slowing, and planned vehicle launches are being postponed. Think of it like a line of dominoes. One country's policy shift topples the first piece, and the impact travels down the chain, hitting manufacturers, consumers, and even export markets abroad. India isn't alone in this squeeze. Other countries trying to scale up electric vehicles from Southeast Asia to parts of Europe face similar vulnerabilities because China dominates the refining and supply of these metals. The chokehold on rare earths has turned what might have seemed like a minor policy change into a global industrial crisis, highlighting how interconnected and fragile modern supply chains really are. Inventories in India's electric vehicle industry are running dangerously low, and the effects are already being felt. By the end of May, many core component suppliers, particularly those dealing with rare earth magnets, were nearly out of stock. 
This shortage has forced major automakers to slow down production. Tata Motors, one of India's leading EV companies, had to cut output by roughly 30%, while Maruti Suzuki was forced to postpone the launch of its new hybrid model originally scheduled for June. The scale of imports really highlights the problem. In 2024, India imported about 460 tons of rare earth magnets, with 90% coming from China. By 2025, that number is expected to rise by over 50%, reaching 700 tons. These figures show just how dependent India has become on Chinese supplies. Without a steady flow of raw materials, production lines stall, consumers wait longer, and export markets risk being lost to competitors from China, Japan, and South Korea. This supply cliff is more than just a logistical headache. It threatens India's entire EV strategy. The country's ambitious 2030 goals for EV adoption could be undermined if factories cannot maintain consistent production. The shortage demonstrates a critical vulnerability. Even with strong domestic policies and financial incentives, India's industrial ambitions are at the mercy of foreign supply chains. This paradox raises the question, if India has massive rare earth reserves at home, why is it still so dependent on China? Understanding this will be key to seeing how the country can overcome its current crisis. India's paradox lies in its vast rare earth reserves, estimated at 6.9 million tons. Yet the country remains heavily dependent on Chinese imports. The core issue is not quantity, but quality and capability. Most of India's rare earth ores are low grade, meaning each ton contains relatively small amounts of the critical metals. Extracting usable material requires processing far larger volumes of ore, which makes mining and refining more complicated and expensive. Technological limitations just compound the problem. India's rare earth refining processes lag about 20 years behind China's. While China can produce magnets with nearly 100% purity, India's current refining reaches only around 95%. Achieving higher purity is crucial for high-performance applications like EV motors and defense systems. The cost difference is staggering. Refining one kilogram of rare earths costs about $12 in China, but around $36 in India. In addition, downstream manufacturing, such as producing permanent magnets and sensors, is far less developed in India, reducing the economic value of extracted rare earths. In short, India has the reserves but lacks the efficient technology, infrastructure, and industrial ecosystem to fully utilize them. This explains why, despite sitting on millions of tons of rare earths, the country remains dependent on Chinese supply. Understanding this gap between potential and capability is critical before exploring how India can overcome its supply vulnerability and secure its electric vehicle ambitions. Faced with this rare earth crisis, India is taking urgent steps to reduce dependence on China and stabilize its electric vehicle industry. Diplomacy has become a key tool. In early June, the Modi government sent a delegation to China to discuss easing export restrictions and ensure a steady supply of critical materials during this sensitive period. At the same time, Indian companies are pursuing strategic partnerships. Tata Motors announced a collaboration with an Australian firm to build a processing line capable of handling 5,000 tons of rare earth raw materials annually by 2026. Similarly, Maruti Suzuki is exploring suppliers in Vietnam, though the quality of available magnets currently limits their use to mid- and low-end EV models. These measures are pragmatic stopgaps designed to keep factories running and prevent production lines from stalling completely. They demonstrate how India is combining diplomacy, private sector initiative, and international partnerships to navigate a supply chain bottleneck that could otherwise cripple its ambitious EV plans. However, while these solutions provide temporary relief, they also highlight the need for long-term strategies to build domestic refining and manufacturing capabilities, ensuring India is not perpetually at the mercy of foreign suppliers. The stakes of India's rare earth dependency go far beyond delayed cars or stalled factories. They extend into exports, jobs, and even national security. If India's EV companies cannot maintain production, key export markets such as South Africa and Southeast Asia may turn to Chinese, Japanese, or Korean manufacturers, eroding India's market share and honestly weakening its position in the global automotive industry. The military implications are equally serious. Modern defense systems rely heavily on rare earths for guidance systems, sensors, and high-performance motors. For instance, an F-35 fighter jet uses roughly 417 kilograms of rare earth elements. 
about the weight of two adult brown bears. Elements like yttrium are critical for stealth coatings that make jets invisible to radar, while gadolinium in engines can withstand temperatures up to 1,500 degrees Celsius, ensuring operational integrity at supersonic speeds. Without a reliable supply, these advanced systems could become non-functional. In short, the rare earth supply chain is not just an industrial concern, it is a strategic one. For India, the inability to secure these materials threatens economic growth, jeopardizes high-tech exports, and exposes vulnerabilities in both civilian and military sectors. Addressing this challenge requires more than short-term fixes. It demands a coordinated long-term strategy to build independence and resilience. Independence won't come overnight, but India has a clear roadmap to build a self-sufficient rare earth industry. The plan involves four key pillars, improving mining efficiency, upgrading refining technology, developing downstream magnet and sensor manufacturing, and investing in recycling. Each step strengthens the link from raw ore to finished product, reducing reliance on foreign suppliers. Policy support plays a central role. Targeted research and development funding can help domestic companies close the technology gap with China, while tax incentives encourage private investment in magnet production and advanced processing facilities. Public-private pilot refineries can demonstrate scalable methods for refining low-grade ores, and strategic stockpiles of critical materials can buffer short-term supply disruptions. Additionally, incentives for domestic manufacturing of sensors and electric motors ensure that extracted rare earths create maximum economic value within India, rather than being exported for processing abroad. This multi-pronged approach transforms raw reserves into usable, high-purity materials while simultaneously building an industrial ecosystem capable of supporting long-term electric vehicle growth. While challenging, these measures provide a practical blueprint for reducing dependence on imports and safeguarding both the automotive and defense sectors. By following this roadmap, India can turn a current vulnerability into a competitive advantage in the global high-tech economy. Pursuing self-sufficiency in rare earths comes with significant costs and trade-offs that India must carefully manage. Mining and refining low-grade ores requires larger extraction volumes, which increases environmental impact and generates substantial waste. Upgrading refining facilities and establishing downstream magnet and sensor manufacturing is capital-intensive, with costs currently about three times higher than in China. There are also social considerations. Mining projects can affect local communities, requiring careful planning, fair compensation, and community engagement to avoid conflicts. Environmental regulations must be strictly enforced to prevent pollution and ensure sustainable practices, balancing industrial growth with ecological responsibility. Despite these challenges, the investment is essential. By modernizing technology, adopting efficient extraction methods, and enforcing environmental safeguards, India can gradually lower production costs improve output quality, and reduce its vulnerability to foreign supply disruptions. A transparent and responsible approach ensures that economic gains from rare earth development do not come at the expense of the environment or society, creating a foundation for a resilient and sustainable domestic industry. India doesn't have to go it alone. Strategic partnerships and diversified supply chains can significantly reduce risk and accelerate the development of a domestic rare earth industry. Bilateral agreements with countries like Australia can provide access to higher quality ores, while Vietnam and other regional suppliers can supplement supply for mid- and low-end applications, even if technical limitations remain. Regional consortia, such as ASEAN or Africa-focused exploration partnerships, can further broaden access to critical minerals. At the same time, investing in recycling, often called urban mining, allows India to recover rare earths from end-of-life electronics and electric vehicles, reducing pressure on new extraction. Incentivizing downstream assembly of magnets and sensors domestically ensures that even imported materials contribute to local industrial capacity. By combining international collaboration with domestic innovation and circular solutions, India can de-risk its supply chain, create new economic opportunities, and steadily move toward greater industrial independence. This multi-layered strategy strengthens both economic and strategic resilience preparing the country to compete globally while safeguarding its industries from future supply shocks. Tiny metals, enormous leverage. India has the reserves and the pathway, but turning them into a self-sufficient, resilient industry 
requires policy, investment, and time. The story of rare earths highlights three key takeaways. First, a mismatch between policy ambitions and supply realities can threaten industrial goals. Second, short-term coping through diplomacy and partnerships is essential to keep production lines running. And third, a clear multi-pronged roadmap, from mining and refining to magnet manufacturing and recycling, can secure long-term independence. This is a test of industrial will, and the outcome will shape who builds the cars of tomorrow, who dominates high-tech supply chains, and how nations safeguard their strategic interests. For India, the challenge is urgent but solvable. With the right combination of governance, technology, and investment, it can convert potential into power. If you want a deep dive into India's rare earth refining options, Tata's Australia deal, or how magnet recycling works, let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all future content. The journey from raw ore to a fully independent industry is just beginning. And the next decade will determine who leads the global electric vehicle revolution.